right, so I want to clear the air of the whole overheating issue with the MacBook Air 2020 because I think for most people who are buying this product for its intended use, it's not going to be a problem for you. And I've seen comments as far as if I open up Word or if I watch a video inside Chrome that my computer is gonna overheat. With that being said, I wanna go back to where people pretty much got this idea from and I'm not here to shame anyone, but I think most people can agree that it came from the reviewer Max Tech. And I'm not saying he's a bad reviewer at all, but when it came to reviewing the MacBook Air 2020, his tests were a little bit biased and skewed because the things he, were, he was doing on the MacBook Air weren't really designed for the MacBook Air. So I think what most people got from that video was if your CPU runs hot and the fans turn on, then your computer is overheating. And I think the term overheating now is just being used very loosely, whereas overheating is, at least this is my opinion of what overheating means, it's when your computer recognizes that it's getting too hot and it won't be able to function if it gets any hotter. So it's going to shut itself off to prevent itself from actually overheating. Um, I have an iPhone on the table. I don't know if this happens on any other phone, but if your phone gets too hot, it will show a thermometer and say, hey, this is too hot. Before I can be used again, I need to cool down. That's not gonna happen on your MacBook Air. And I don't wanna get too much into the specifics of why it won't overheat, but there's something called a T-junction, and that's pretty much the limit of how hot the CPU can be ran. And 100 degrees is the max. It's not gonna get any higher. And for what you're going to be using the MacBook Air for, you shouldn't be hitting 100% at all, all the time, which is not going to happen. So I can't actually open up the back for you guys because I don't have the necessary tools, but I have seen videos of the MacBook Air being opened up and I know there's no heat sink attached to the CPU, but the fan is attached to a chamber that does dissipate, dissipate heat out through the back right here. And I'm not here to defend Apple by any means. I'm not paid by Apple to make this video. I wish I was paid by Apple to make this video and I'm not an Apple fanboy. So another thing I wanna to touch on is fan noise and I don't even know why this is an issue with the MacBook Air or just an issue at all because I do know there are laptops where the fans do get really, really loud but I would not say that my fans get really loud for the MacBook Air. You have to understand that there's gonna be ambient noise that goes on around you. You could have headphones in, or you could be listening to my videos through the speakers, and you're not gonna be able to hear the fans unless you're actively listening to it. Like right now, for example, my MacBook Pro 2012, the fans are on right now, and I can barely hear it unless I actively try to listen to them. So fan noise should not be an issue for you guys if you're trying to purchase this laptop because it's pretty quiet for the most part. So another thing I wanna to touch on are benchmarks and how I don't really focus on them in my reviews. Now I will go ahead and say that benchmarks are important, numbers are important, but I think people just get so fixated on numbers that they kinda get lost on how the product actually performs in everyday use, where if they see their product on a chart and there are other products that are outperforming it from based on the numbers, that their product sucks, and that's not the case. Your product is still good for its intended use. Benchmarks are designed to push the CPU to its limit to determine a performance score. If you run a benchmark five times in a row, then yes, your CPU is more than likely going to hit 100%, depending on your cooling system. And that's just the nature of what benchmarks are designed to do. They're designed to push the CPU to its limit. Uh, what I focus on for my reviews are target audience. And I think if you look into what the MacBook Air is designed for, you'll notice that what it's designed to do, it is really good at doing that. So everyday task. If you're checking your emails, taking notes, writing papers, watching some videos on YouTube, on Chrome, it doesn't matter. Your computer is not gonna overheat and it's gonna be able to do all those things perfectly fine. Uh, in terms of video editing, I know some people have questions about that. If you're video editing in like 720p or 180p, 180? If you're video editing in 720p or uh, 1080p, uh, there to there, it should be fine. You shouldn't be doing it consistently because that's not what the MacBook Air is designed for. If you wanna do stuff like gaming, 4K video editing, programming with like high compilation times, or just intensive tasks in general, that's not what the MacBook Air is designed for. That's why Apple has their MacBook Pro lineup because that's what those tasks are made for. So I pretty much, like I said before, I really wanna clear the air. And if you do have the i5 and you are concerned about it overheating or getting hot, don't worry about it. 
you're basically future proofing yourself you're getting the same battery life as you are with the i3 you're getting better performance and i think for most people i think the extra hundred dollars will benefit them in the long term especially since you are getting a quad core and it's really just a peace of mind that you're going to be getting in the years to come so with that being said I know this isn't a traditional video that I typically make, but I really just wanted to clear the air because I've seen these comments everywhere and it's just, I've seen a lot of fear with people getting the i5 and there's no reason you should be fearing the i5 if you're going to be using the laptop for very minimal things. And I also do wanna show you guys um, the video test that Max Tex did in his video. All right, so I want to do the same test that Max Tex did on his video which was the 4K 60 FPS. And just to show you guys, this is the i5 2020 MacBook Air. And first things first, I'm gonna open up Intel Power Gadget. Um, I'm sitting at around 36 degrees. Um, just to debunk the calculator thing, I'm gonna open up calculator. Um, spiked up to 50, but now I dropped back down. That's the turbo or the boost happening. And I also wanna say that Chrome is a very browser intensive web browser so if you have a lot of resources on your computer chrome is going to try its best to eat all that up so we're going to do the 4k hdr and i also know in max texas video he said most people don't watch 4k 60 fps video videos um, like i said i'm not here to shame the guy it's just pretty much to show you guys what's actually happening happening and the reasoning why and also watching 4k 60 fps without a dedicated gpu and solely this a CPU that's not really designed to watch 4K 60 FPS is actually pretty hard to do, especially in a device that's this thin and light. So right now I'm hovering at around 90 degrees Celsius. Um, I do intend to see this rise even higher as the video progresses. So right now we're at 95, 96, and I don't think a vast majority of people are gonna be watching 4K 60 FPS on top of that, I don't even think there's much content on YouTube that's 4K 60 FPS. So I'm just going to watch a regular 1080p video from one of my favorite YouTubers, Graham Stefan. I'm gonna watch his latest video. Um, I have an ad, unfortunately, but I'm gonna skip the ad. And now I'm watching in regular 1080p and hopefully, well, I intend to see the temperatures drop. So. Now it's hovering at around 80 degrees, which I, I would say is not too bad. If you guys do have an older MacBook Air and you're looking to upgrade, please do this test on your own machine and see if you are getting similar results because I do expect to see the temperatures to be almost identical. Now we're sitting at around 75 degrees and I'm watching just a regular 1080p video and it's spiking up, Just that's basically just the boost clock working in but we're bouncing anywhere between 70 and 80 degrees, which I think is perfectly normal for most people. So the whole web browser inside Chrome can't watch videos because it's gonna overheat. I think that's something that's just a little bit ridiculous to me. And I'll open up some other things in the background. So I'll open up Word, Calculator. I'll open up Safari. I'll have mail open in the background. I'll open up the app store and we're gonna continue watching this video. And yes, it's, do, it's going to spike up because I'm opening up all these applications, but as you can see, it's going to be dropping back down. So right now we're at 85, 80, 80. So don't worry about your computer overheating because you're not watching 4K 60 FPS all the time, guys. So like I said, this is not my typical review on this channel, but I really just wanted to clear the air and give people more peace of mind on the i5 and just the MacBook Air in general. Uh, if you did like the video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you wanna see more content. The OnePlus 8 Pro is coming out this week or announced 30 watt wireless charging, but okay, I'm nerding out. So that's gonna be it for me today, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Much love. Peace.